want a plan that will work for me. And I think millennials um, want to have the conversation. We want to deal with it. We could probably all benefit from, from having therapy in American society right now. Like so many of us, Sasha is stuck at home because of COVID-19. She's part of a team that tackles the leading causes of preventable diseases. And she'll be the first to tell you that when it comes to health, all things are not equal. It's true in her personal life and in her neighborhood. Sasha lives in Minneapolis. And these days, reminders of inequity seem to be everywhere. So you have a public health crisis on one hand, the weight of social injustice on the other, and millennials, like Sasha, so in the middle. But I think what we've witnessed over, you know, this summer, and having that be compounded by folks who are already feeling isolated, are already feeling vulnerable, are already feeling um, a disconnect from community. And, you know, I know, speaking for myself, and, and being somebody who, who is Indigenous and, and biracial, you know, I think that the the impact has been so profound on, on particularly on, on mental and emotional health. What Sasha feels is at the heart of an ongoing effort by Blue Cross and Blue Shield companies to fundamentally improve the health of millennials. The work is backed by years of research and data with insights that impact what has become the largest generation in the workforce. Even if, you know, the picture might be dismal right now, the fact that folks are actually really um, concerned, wanting to look at how can we change this, trying to gather data, and, and really taking the issue seriously is very hopeful for me. In 2019, Blue Cross Blue Shield launched its first millennial health report. What followed was a series of listening sessions across the country. We do have a bold vision, and that bold vision is using the vast amount of our data to really drive, to really understand uh, health, both nationally, regionally, and locally in our community. This is where we first met Sasha. She was one of hundreds talking about health, the problems, and ways to fix it. The report on millennial health captured national headlines, turning conversations into ideas and ideas into action, including dozens of new initiatives rolling out from Blue Cross Blue Shield companies, all of them health solutions with millennials in mind. I think for so long we've um, kind of had so much stigma, and we still do, around even talking about behavioral health and mental health. And a lot of folks, I would say, you know, think, oh, you know, that's changing for millennials, but it's still, it's still there, and it's so present. You know, even me, I've, I've, um, I have been out of therapy for a really long time, but just recently decided, you know what, I actually, this is something I really need right now. Um, but sometimes you just need that extra support, and that's something I'm really, you know, try to try to say openly because I think a lot of people still have shame, you know, around even saying. Oh, I have to meet with a therapist or, you know, I'm getting help when that's something we should be celebrating. Sasha knows all of this work to improve millennial health won't happen overnight. But with data driving new solutions, there's a reason she's optimistic. And not just for millennials, but for every generation. You know, it shouldn't just be up to millennials to, to be the ones to solely create change that how do we as a society start to create changes within our healthcare systems, um, within our behavioral health treatment centers, um, so that generations, you know, who have yet to come won't face the same barriers and hopefully can ultimately, you know, achieve healthier lives.